Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Again, I'm Eric Brodell. I'm our Business and Political Engagement Manager. And I'm here with Zoe Kirkus, our Director of Grants and Partnerships here at People for Bikes. Uh, we're going to run you through our community grants program today and talk a little bit more about increasing opportunities for bike riding in communities across the United States. And with that, I will hand it off to Zoe. Great. Thank you, Eric. Uh, just on the screen here, you see a real short agenda of what we're going to cover. Um, I will go through a very short history. Don't worry, it's not scary history. Um, we'll describe and show you some pictures of our funded projects that describe uh, our grants process, including uh, what we don't fund as well as what we do fund. And then we'll end with how you all can get involved in our community grants program. Um, so as Eric said, I'm Director of Grants and Partnerships. I've been with People for Bikes uh, for eight and a half years. In that time, I have read literally thousands of grant applications, and I'm really excited to be with, here with you today so that I can uh, describe the work that we do and the kinds of projects that we support um, so that you can be more aware of that and hopefully get engaged in local projects uh, where you live. Uh, so a very, very short history. People for Bikes started 20 years ago in 1999. It actually started as Bikes Belong. And uh, the Community Grants Program one is, was one of the two initial programs that uh, Bikes Belong started, along with federal lobbying for increased investment in um, bike pad infrastructure. So we have been actually making grants for 20 years. Uh, we've uh, funded more than 400 projects uh, and given out nearly $3.5 million. Uh, those dollars have leveraged uh, more than $700 million in other sources uh, for those projects. So what kind of things do we fund? Um, pretty much if you can ride a bike on it, we will fund it. And I'll take you through some photos of some projects that we have funded. Uh, BMX. Uh, we don't get as many BMX project applications as I would like to see, but we uh, do receive them. And here you see a nice photo of uh, the Tri-City BMX uh, track in Kearney, Nebraska. Uh, we also fund pump tracks and bike parks. Those are increasing in popularity, getting a lot more applications for those kinds of facilities than we did when I started eight years ago. Uh, this one is a fabulous picture of opening day for the Philly Bike Park in Philadelphia. Uh, we just recently granted an additional uh, uh, chunk of money to the Philly Pump Track to add um, a jump line around the exterior of the, these two pump tracks that are in place. Uh, I've just started to get more applications for fat bike uh, facilities, but this just shows kind of a regular mountain bike trail in Duluth, a traverse trail, uh, which you can ride in the winter because if you can't ride in the winter in Duluth, when are you going to ride? Um, another great mountain bike trail uh, out in Grand Junction, Colorado, not too far away. Uh, and also bike parking. So bike parking wasn't one of the things that we funded when I started here, but after a while we realized that if we were going to encourage people to ride to work, to school, to the library, that we needed to support places for them to actually park their bikes there. So we um, opened up our grants to allow for uh, funding for bike, par uh, bike parking and also bike fix-it and repair maintenance stations. So we fund both of those now. And here is a nice photo of the uh, Lafitte Greenway in North Orleans and some um, nice um, uh, custom racks that they installed along that facility. We don't fund a lot of events, I'll be straight up with you, but one of the kind that we do fund are Open Streets Days or Sick La Villas. Uh, this is the Sick La Via in LA, uh, which now holds mm, four to five events per year and generally attracts 100,000 plus people. So a very, very popular and um, uh, successful example of a Sick La Via. We actually funded the first one that, that started in 2010, so we're really proud of that uh, initial investment in that program. Uh, I would say our bread and butter is bike uh, ped multi-use trails. So here's an example of one uh, in South Central Illinois, the Kickapoo Rail Trail. Uh, I did not fund it just because it's fun to say Kickapoo. Um, it's actually a great facility that extends east-west across the state. And a nice story with this one, when they opened, a um, husband and wife team had opened a restaurant at one end of the new facility, and they got so much business on Saturday and Sunday mornings from the new uh, trail and people are riding and walking on it that they actually had to add staff and add bike racks outside of their restaurant and that made a great story that we shared in a blog 
And then finally, uh, a photo here from Granger, Indiana. Again, another multi-use path. Uh, nice story from there. We were the first um, national organization to fund this trail. Uh, it was started by a lady who wanted her kids to have a way to ride their bikes to the library so, so she didn't have to load them up in the car every time they wanted to get outside their front door. Uh, when she was trying to collect money uh, for this project, the people in the county told her there is no way we will ever fund a bike trail. So don't even ask us. Well, a year later, after this was in and people loved it, they came back and said, well, you know, maybe we could help you out with an extension. So that's a nice uh, story about what uh, kind of resources that an established project can bring uh, once it's in place and people get to see and experience it. So a little bit of detail about our process. Uh, our funding range is up to $10,000. I know that doesn't sound like a whole lot of money for some of these bigger projects, but our grants are often used as part of a local match for state and federal funding. Uh, we probably go down to a low, as low as maybe $1,000, but generally in the $2,500 to $10,000 range. Uh, we have two grant cycles per year. Uh, I post those schedule that schedule up on our website starting about October of the previous year. Uh, and our process is such that we start with a letter of of interest uh, application. I know it sounds like it's a letter that you will mail to me, but you actually don't. You go online and submit an online letter of interest during the two uh, periods when that um, that's open every year. And it's a pretty easy uh, application to start with. It asks two questions uh, plus administrative information, low barrier to entry, submit. Uh, we review those and we select about 35 to 40 to, uh, that are invited to submit a full application. I would say our range of the number of LOIs we get ranges from 100 to 300. I just closed our most recent uh, LOI application process and we got 195. So definitely getting to be more popular as more places are building places to ride bikes. As far as what we look for, we look for uh, diversity in three areas. Uh, certainly geographic diversity is key. We fund in all 50 states and the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico, so we want to have a nice mix of places across the country to show that we're paying attention to everybody. Uh, we want a diversity in terms of the type of project. So as I said, we'll fund any kind of place that you can ride a bike, and we want to have that uh, diversity reflected in, in each of our grant pools. And then finally, we want to support projects in all sizes of communities. So we don't want to just be in big urban locations or in rural communities. We want to be in suburbs, small towns, um, all of those. So again, we look for kind of diversity there when we're selecting our final recipients. And uh, I showed you what we do fund. I'll tell you what we don't fund. Uh, you'd be surprised at the number of people who ask if they can uh, get funding to build car parking outside of a trailhead. And even though I know it's serving a trailhead, uh, a trail where you can ride bikes, uh, we are people for bikes, and so if I actually funded car parking, I think I'd get fired. Um, we unfortunately do not fund classes or education. We used to do that early in our history, but uh, we just get so many applications now for infrastructure, we decided to focus in. So we unfortunately are not able to support um, those kind of programming or class efforts, and we also do not fund uh, equipment or gear. And just so we're really clear about what the bikes and people for bikes means, it means bicycles. It does not mean motorcycles or motorbikes. So uh, no facilities for those folks. So you're in the bike industry. What can you do to help us out with our community grants? Well, number one, you can let your local partners know uh, that we have this grant opportunity available. Uh, I wish that we had more money that we could give out, so I can't say that uh, each and every one of them is going to get funding, but we're certainly uh, interested in letting local organizations and cities and other government entities, all of which we will fund, uh, know about the um, grants that we offer. Uh, we do have a requirement in our full application that that, um, applicants must include a letter of support from the bike industry. We are supported by the bike industry. Our funding for community grants comes from the bike industry, so we want to make sure that um, retailers, especially on the ground locally, working with their organizations, know about what projects are happening. And to do that, we want to see a letter of support so that they are um, uh, demonstrating to us that they're involved in and supporting that project. And then get your company involved in employee per purchase, which leads to the question of, 
what is employee per purchase? Well, employee per purchase, uh, say that three times fast if you can, uh, is the way that we fund our community grants. It is a pass-through program. Some of you may have seen when you um, got a pro deal on a bike that at the bottom of that form there was a little line that gave you, um, uh, added on a mandatory donation of 20 bucks. Uh, it might have been called something different on different forms. Sometimes it's called People for Bikes donations. Sometimes it's called trail grants. Uh, we'd like that to be a little more consistent, but basically what that is is a collection um, that our partners on the uh, pass-through program uh, um, put on there and they collect all those dollars and then they send uh, that money to us and we give out all that money in community grants. That does not pay my salary does not pay for me to go out to lunch. It pays for the programs that we support through grants. Uh, so at the top of this uh, slide, you can see the um, companies that are currently participating in the Employee Per Purchase program. We would love to increase the number of companies represented there, uh, and we are deeply grateful to the ones that currently support, support the um, EPP program. Uh, as it says here, it costs your company nothing except for the uh, time and energy to set up the program. Usually that means, um, as I said, adding it on to your um, pro deal form, uh, creating a SKU so that you can track how many donations are made, and then sending us the check either monthly, quarterly, or annually. And uh, we're happy to uh, work with companies that have the Employee Per Purchase Program to let them know what their, uh, grant, their um, donation money has supported in terms of grants. I think that is it. Here you can see, you can access uh, information about the community grants. We have a whole section on our website. Under our work, you can see community grants. Uh, we have grant guidelines. We have the schedule. Uh, the links for how to apply are all there. And of course, you can always email or call me if you have questions. And if you want to sign up for Employee Per Purchase, you can contact me or you can contact uh, Rod Judd, whose information is also there. Either of us would be happy to help you uh, get on board. And if there are any questions at this point, please type those into the box provided on your GoToWebinar control panel. I will wait for a few seconds here to see if any come in. All right, well, not seeing any questions now. Oh, here we have one. Uh, do you fund bike share programs? That's a really good question. Um, so bike share has existed kind of in that gray area for us. I will say that we have never actually supported a bike share uh, program or you know bike share equipment or program. It is eligible, um, but I'd, I'd say they're generally, because our grants are so small, they don't get most bike share programs very far. Uh, if you're interested in um, uh, submitting a project uh, for bike share, I'd recommend that you either give me a call or send me an email. We can talk about that in a little more detail. Uh, you give grants to government programs too. We will fund 501c3 nonprofit organizations or government agencies like cities or counties. Um, that's where they mostly come from for cities like the Parks and Rec Department or Department of Transportation we will fund. When is the next cycle go opening up? Uh, so we just closed our letter of interest um, cycle for our spring grants. The next one will open in mid-June, and usually uh, the letter of interests are accepted in a kind of a six-week window. You can go on uh, to our the grant section, and you can actually download the very simple uh, letter of interest application, so you can have that ready to go and just cut and paste it into the application once it's open, um, but it is pretty simple to do. So the next one will open in June, and those grants will go out in um, early December. Uh, oh, sorry, one grant is awarded per cycle? No, we usually uh, award about six to ten grants per cycle, generally. Uh, that can vary a little bit. Sometimes we get a little uh, more money than other times, and so we'll increase the number of grants according to the money that we have. These are all really great questions, so if any of you have another one sitting in your head, feel free to ask. Will this PowerPoint be available to attendees? Yes, right, Eric? Yes, we will be sending out a recording of this webinar to everyone who has registered uh, for this uh, particular uh, webinar. Uh, another great question, which entity is best to submit the proposal? Um, can a 
bike shop submit a proposal with a nonprofit, or is it best to come from that group? So we cannot um, fund a for-profit entity. So if your bike shop is a you know a business as opposed to a community cycling uh, organization that would be a 501c3, then the uh, application does need to come from the partnering nonprofit. But I always recommend that the nonprofit note in the application that they're partnering with the bike shop. We definitely pay attention to that. As I said, we're funded by the bike industry. Um, so uh, we pay close attention to um, the engagement of those local partners. Um, yeah, and then I think that answered your question. Uh, and sometimes people ask which is better to submit, like a city or a nonprofit, and that's really up to who's kind of managing the grant. But a lot of times the city has a little more red tape associated with getting money out the door, so sometimes it works a little easier and cleaner if it goes to the nonprofit. Uh, is there a notification newsletter you can sign up for to be alerted when the application window opens? Um, at the moment, we don't have that in place. We always put it in our um, uh, e-news. We can be sure to include that when the um, application cycles are opening. I will say that it's on a fairly regular schedule for probably the last four or five years. We've been on that when um, spring-fall schedule where the uh, first application opens in mid-December. Uh, LOIs are accepted through mid-January, and then that money is awarded in late May, and then the next one opens in June and ends in December. So that's pretty consistent that way. Um, but I do recommend that you just kind of check back in and, and see what the, um, uh, the schedule is for each year. Uh, and has a cross facility been funded through this grant? You know what? I don't think I've ever gotten an application for that. That is a good point. Um, so you're... Um, eligible, go ahead and submit. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever gotten that one. Oh, a stumper. Congratulations. We should send you a pair of socks, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> and to piggyback off of that e-news announcement, uh, the way that you all received the invite for this webinar was through our e-news list. So you will be kept up to date when that cycle opens back up. Just keep your eyes peeled on those communications. <laughs> Well, it looks like we've run dry on the questions part of things. We have just a couple more slides here that I'll go through. We really want to thank all of our industry coalition members here at People for Bikes. We couldn't do the work that we do without our partners and our members. So big shout out to all of these groups listed here on this slide. And if you're in interested in being a coalition member of People for Bikes, please consider uh, joining our coalition to support our work in Washington, D.C., build a uh, better uh, bike industry, protect access for bikes on our public lands, and that is everywhere that you use a bike, uh, secure funding for more bike infrastructure, and uh, get access on the most up-to-date information like these webinars. Um, if you're interested in joining our coalition, please contact Jen Dice today, uh, jen at peopleforbikes.org, and you can also send an email to Rod Judd, which is just rod at peopleforbikes.org. It looks like we've actually had a couple more questions come in here, so we'll get to those. Uh, so one question, working with a funding stream of town government, I found it hard to line it up. Oh. Uh, I'm not sure what the question is. Are you talking about um, uh, making sure that the town government is um, securing funding specifically for bike infrastructure? Uh, we definitely can, if that is the, the inquiry, we can definitely, um, oh, as far as uh, coordinating between a town and a grantor, uh, generally, you know, if it's uh, on the public right of way, for sure, you have to be in a collaboration with, you know, whoever controls those roads, which is usually the city or town, although sometimes can be the state. Um, so usually they have to be on board. I would say that's kind of a longer conversation. So I recommend that you give me a ring um, at my number or email me and we can set up a time to talk through what's the easiest way to get uh, cities and towns on board with building more bike infrastructure. We do have a lot of resources to help with that. Um, 
So I would mentioned that we'd like to see more BMX grant applications. Can I talk more about what types of applications we'd like to see? Uh, BMX just represents a very small number of the actual applications that we get, although my understanding from talking to folks at USA BMX is that it's actually a pretty growing field. I, I like those applications because they're usually very grassroots oriented. It's usually um, families that are engaging in um, uh, those, you know, the track management and hosting those events. And so just really nice stories for us to share. As far as what types of BMX applications that you'd like to see, we'd, we've funded all kinds. We've funded um, a track renovations. We've funded um, new tracks. I would say most of them that come in at this point are for like a new starting gate or um, paving um, some part of the, the track or for some sort of renovation. Sometimes it's for relocation, but more renovation. So, um, any of those are eligible. I'd say that what we're most interested in seeing is some um, um, skin in the game locally. Uh, so that is, we generally don't fund all of a project. We want to see um, local partners contributing money to the project that they're asking for us um, to us to fund. Um, and knowing kind of uh, how you're engaging, you know, youth in the community, usually for BMX, youth in the community, and how you're bringing people in, and what kind of growth or change you're seeing in the in the number of students or youth participating. I hope that kind of gives you an idea. You're always welcome to talk through any grant idea that you have with me. I usually recommend that to give me a ring ahead of time, and I can give you some insight into how, you're, how to frame your request so that it'll be most compelling to the grant review committee. And that's something also probably important to say is that I don't make all the decisions. I take you through the process, I make a certain number of decisions, and then it goes to a review committee. So um, it's not just me um, in a little closet deciding who gets money and who doesn't. Uh, and I will also add that I'm always happy to give feedback on any grant that was not successful. Um, as I've said, because of the number of applications that we receive, we get lots more than we can actually fund, which doesn't mean that yours isn't a really great project. Um, but if you ask for feedback, I will give it to you. And Ryan says thank you. You're welcome, Ryan. All right, thank you everyone for your great participation in this webinar today. We're looking forward to continuing this 2019 webinar series with you all in the future. If you have any additional questions, please do send those questions to the